GAC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation. And welcome into Fire Lake Arena, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the final two quarterfinals on the women's side here at the Great American Conference Tournament Championships at Fire Lake Arena in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Delighted to have you. I'm Luke McConnell alongside my partner, Joey McWilliams. We are thrilled to have you for the nightcap of day two of the Great American Conference Championships. It's the final two Quarterfinals on the women's side. The 4-5 matchup tonight pits number four seed Henderson State and the number five seed Arkansas Tech Golden Suns. And following this one, the cherry on top, if you will, Joey, the three seed Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers against the number six seed Southwestern Oklahoma State Bulldog. And you see some highlights from the action yesterday with the ones and twos taking the court on the men's and women's side, but we are excited to have you here. We've had a great day so far. Southern Nazarene men winning in overtime against Arkansas Monticello here in the 4-5 matchup on the men's side. And the number three seed, Northwestern Oklahoma State outlasting Southwestern Oklahoma State. Here, we've got another big matchup here tonight. Tech and Henderson State. The Reddies have lost six consecutive games to the Golden Suns in postseason play. That goes back a long time, Joey, but it's a streak that the Reddies would really like to break tonight. Absolutely, and, and you know, they've, they've won some during the regular season. Split, as a matter of fact, with Arkansas Tech during the regular season. But it's when you start playing in March, that's those are the games people remember the most. And so they definitely remember six straight L's. They definitely like to change their fortune tonight. And why not? It's as good a night as any. They've got players on the court that can get it done. Absolutely. And two very different styles here. You've got the Reddies, the best three-point shooting team in the conference, 19th in the nation. On the other side, you've got the Golden Suns, a very big team, rebounding, rugged play inside. It's going to be a fascinating to see which style reigns supreme here this evening. No, I always hear that, that defense wins championships. I've heard that years and years and years uh, for so long. But, you know, I've, I've come to see also in, in this time and uh, with even some of the teams that we still have left in the tournament, when you score points, it actually makes a difference too. And, and you have to put those points on the board. So it, it will be interesting to see which of those contrasting styles comes out on top tonight. The Golden Suns come in having won their last two and four of the last five. The Reddies were swept over the weekend last week. They have gone five and five in their last 10 games. So two teams looking to spring an upset in this GAC tournament and punch their ticket to the NCAA Central Region as both teams head to the sideline. The national anthem, the starting lineups, the opening tip. It's all coming up next here on the GAC Sports Network. Running outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there. You don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You got to get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform, they need to be like fast. The merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs, that's where we are really going to turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're going to perform better. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process and 
in those collegiate years, those years of the university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. And welcome back to Fire Lake Arena. The starting lineups being introduced for both schools. Let's run through those for you first. For Arkansas Tech, the number five seed in the tournament this weekend. Number three, senior guard Maisa Marsal, 5'10", out of Brazil, averaging nine points and five rebounds per game this season. Also fourth in the conference in assists with four per game. Number 24. Excuse me, number 22, junior forward Dana Thompson, six foot from Miami, Florida, averaging 10 and a half points and 10 rebounds per game this season. Number 24, junior guard Clara Grace Prater, 5'10 out of Bologna, Arkansas, seven and a half points and three rebounds per game this season. Number 25, junior guard Alex Hill, 5'10 out of Harrison, Arkansas, averaging 12 points per game. And number 30, junior forward Julie Wagner, 6'2 out of Humboldt, Tennessee, averaging seven points and six rebounds per game. Joey, who are you spotlighting tonight for the Golden Suns? Well, when I look at what Arkansas Tech brings to the table, I mean, you have to look at Patience McDaniel just be, from the standpoint of putting up 20 points a game, 21 points per game to be exact, rebounding at a pace of better than six, and, and actually playing defense as well. So, you know, I, I, I think that's a, a big thing for them to, for Henderson State to be able to, uh, to deal with on the defensive side. We've talked about Henderson State's offense, but they're going to have to stop her as well. The Golden Suns are coached by Dave Wilbers in his 17th season at the helm. Assistant coach is Brad Palmer. For Henderson State tonight, number one, senior guard Tori Gittens, 5'11 out of Sherman, Texas, 11 points and three rebounds per game this season. The newcomer of the year in the Great American Conference. Number two, senior guard Jada Pickens, 5'6 out of Conway, Arkansas, averaging eight points and three rebounds per game. Number 10, senior guard Ashley Farrar, first team all GAC performer, 5'11 from Green Forest, Arkansas, 16 points and five rebounds per game this season. Number 11, sophomore guard Brindley Huggins, 5'10 out of Pangburn, Arkansas, eight points and two rebounds per game this season. And in the middle, number 33, junior forward Bobby Basil, six foot out of the Woodlands, Texas, three points and six rebounds per game. The Reddies are coached by Jill Thomas in her 11th season at in Arkadelphia and for the Reddies, Joey, who are you looking at tonight? Well, I feel like Ashley Ferrara has been a part of the program for just about, a, I mean, how many years? I know she's a grad student, but it, she's one of those players that's just been there forever. And what she does is more than just statistic wise. Now, granted, she does lead her team in scoring, but she is somebody that Coach Thomas is really, really glad to continue to have on her team. Talked about that at the outset of the year, that she was glad that Ashley was coming back for one more to opportunity, and, and obviously it's made a difference this year. Both teams looking to punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. That journey begins tonight. This tip is won by Basil, but controlled by Claire Grace Prater and the Suns. Moving right to left to start the game. Here's Marsal, quick trigger on the three. Nothing with the bottom of the net for Maisa Marsal. Well, those are the quickest three points we've had so far this weekend. Not even close. Three-point shooting going to be the story for the Reddies. Number one in the conference and 19th nationally at 35%. They make just over eight per game as Farrar gets inside and banks it in off the glass. Outside, Alex Hill dumps it inside to Julie Wagner with Farrar on her. See if the Suns go at that. Hill all the way to the basket, hit the underside of the rim. Loose ball picked up by Jada Pickens. Pickens open for three. 
In and out. Basil, the offensive rebound. Farrar run off the line, hesitates, reverse layup. It bounces off, and Wagner comes up with the rebound for Tech. That's one of those, she was starting to make it look like a two-line layup drill right there. That just didn't fall for her, but they give her the opening on the baseline. That pass a little awry of Thompson, and it trickles out of bounds. Early turnover for the Golden Suns. The Golden Suns, not good in that category this year, Joey, to put it kindly. Dead last in the league, just under 19 turnovers per game. Huggins tries her hand at a three. She rattles it in. Reddy's on top for the first time tonight. Five three. Reddy's answered that quick three from Arkansas Tech and really haven't looked back. Thompson up strong in the paint. It's been a great Thompson. year for Dana Thompson. Honorable mention, all GAC performer. Third in the conference in rebounding at 10 per game. Second in offensive rebounds. That's a good find for Basil, and she's fouled going up. Foul is on Julie Wagner, her first personal foul. Was on Julie Wagner. Basil heads That's to the free throw line for two. Teams first. A pace like this seems to favor Henderson State right off the bat. Can Arkansas Tech keep up with that pace? So it's a different feel this year for Coach Wilbur's squad. But you know that, as you mentioned earlier, defense is going to be a part of it always. Second free throw is no good for Basil. Reddy's lead this one six to five. Marsal to the basket. She's fouled going up. This one's going on Basil. Marsal and Hill, both with recognition on Wednesday night. Honorable mention, all GAC performers this year. And you know, Luke, in our previous game, we had probably the least amount of tenure for coaches in the GAC in one matchup in what we saw from Coach Weiberg and Coach Harmon. Three years combined of tenure in the league. What we see in this matchup is probably the most combined tenure in this tournament this year with Coach Thomas in her 11th season and Coach Wilbers in his 17th. Huggins straight away rips the cords for three. Joey, I think she's a wild card in this one. You get a lot of attention to Farrar. You give a lot of attention to Gittins, the nation's leader in three-point shooting. But Huggins, just 31% this season, but she's hit 43 of them. And she's connected on 40% since January, or excuse me, February 3rd. Quick pass, but even quicker defense. And it was in that February 3rd game at Southern Nazarene. 19 points for Huggins on five May threes. The Reddy's put a scare into the Crimson Storm. SNU having to come back in the final five minutes to win that game and stay undefeated at the time. But Huggins, a big reason why. Farrar, nifty shot in the paint, but just a little too strong, and Wagner tips the rebound over to Hill. Nice lead pass ahead to Sarah Edmondson running the break, and she lays it in for two. Sarah Edmondson into the game for Dana Thompson. Pickens inside, and a foul going on the Golden Suns. Marsal can't believe it, says so she got hit in the face. Team second at the line. Two, First on Marsal. Is number two, Jada Pickens. Jada Pickens missed most of last year with an ACL injury. You see that brace on her left knee. Has been great since the beginning of February, and that coincided with the season-ending injury to Natalie Cardenas as we got a tie-up inside. Jump ball, the possession arrow belongs to the Reddies. Jump ball gives the ball back to the Reddies, Joey, and Pickens, of one of those veterans who's played really, really well at a prime time for Henderson State. 
with replacing what they lost from the Cardenas injury. Yeah, and you, you mentioned that the conference stage being the shining point. This is when it counts to be able to come in. And obviously, momentum brought into the tournament from the latter part of the season. Foul on Alex Hill, her first. Already three fouls on the Golden Suns. First three minutes and change for ours. Free throw bounces off. Reddy's number one in the conference and 10th nationally free throw percentage at 78%. Already three for five here in the first quarter. They take an 11-7 lead. I'm looking at the shots go up, and you know, you, you mentioned early on about the size, the differential that it's going to make for Arkansas Tech, especially on defense. Henderson State has not been deterred by it yet. Claire Grace Prater knocked a little off balance, forced it up, but it is an air ball out of bounds. Back to the Reddies. Gittins denied on that by Edmondson. Farrar shooting over the top, knocks it down. And the ready start the game three for four from deep. And lead this one 14 to seven. Marsal, nice look underneath to Edmondson, threw it over the rim, no good. Gittins has the rebound and now a silly Foul on Marsal in the backcourt, 94 feet from the basket. That's number two on Marsal already, and Joey can't have that. No, you really can't, and I mean, just indicative of her, her play. That no-look pass was fantastic, finding a way to distribute the ball, get it to her teammates, and to pick up quick fouls like that, they need her on the court as long as they can have her on there. They can't afford for Coach Wilbers to be able to have to take her off because of silly fouls like that. Loose ball on the missed shot. Gittins finds it, lays it in for two, and Dave Wilbers has seen it out. 16 to seven, Reddies. They're off and running with 5.26 to go in the first quarter. Timeout on the court. We'll take it as well and be back with more on the GAZ Sports Network. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but strength, knowledge, and wisdom are what you build along the way. There's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, you write your own script to what comes next. So here's your cue. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now, because our focus is on your success. And welcome back to Fire Lake Arena. Henderson State leading this one 16 to seven. Dave Wilbur's in the huddle with his team. Samantha Roop, our sideline reporter this evening, also over there. And Samantha, what Coach Wilbur's have to say to his team? even before the timeout, subbing in and out people, he just says he wants the possession to be more calm and for his defense to be stronger. But looking at the fouls right now, we're four to one in fouls. So I guess he just wants to be stronger on the ball and win the first ball first. Left wide open for three and she drained another one. Picture perfect start for the ready. Jill Thomas fired up over there on the sidelines. Thanks for that report, Samantha. We'll be checking in with Samantha all weekend long. Here's Marsal to answer. She does from the left wing. That's a big shot for the Suns who desperately needed something positive. And that's why Coach Wilbers has to have her out on the court. Defense, 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 defense. 
Golden Suns, man-to-man -man defense here. Huggins got around Edmondson, an easy deuce. Huggins. Huggins, a speed advantage there on the taller Edmondson. Not a deep Golden Suns team this year. Joey, especially with Pacious McDaniel out from the injury, she got injured over the break. Alex Hill goes down hard on that a foul on Basil. That's her second personal foul. Now, and you, you look on the on the bench right now. You're going to see a number of players in uniform, but Coach Wilbers doesn't go that far down his bench to bring players in. And you know, a lineup like that and a rotation like that, almost of necessity, is going to contract as you get further into late February and early March. So we'll see just how far he either has to or needs to go down his bench tonight. Alex Hill, fifth in the conference in free throw attempts, 129. That one well off to the right. 70% shooter. Hill obviously got had a great first experience at the Great American Conference Championships as a freshman. As Brentley Huggins got caught on the travel there. J.J. Eddins is in for Gittins and McKenna Winans in and Olivia Allen in for the Reddies as Pickens and Basil take a break for Henderson State. But Alex Hill, the game-winning bucket in the closing seconds against number two seed Southern Nazarene in the 2022 conference tournament. We have a tie-up here. Basketball will stay with the Golden Suns. Hard to, hard to top a game-winning bucket in your first game, Joey. Exactly. Well, Arkansas Tech historically has been made for the month of March. And the opportunities, the times when the Golden Suns have just shined during this month on the conference stage have, have just been, I mean, year in and year out. Ball deflected away from Claire Grace Prater, and then she and Olivia Allen collided going for it, and it ricochets off of Prater out of bounds. Another turnover for the Golden Suns. That's their third of the quarter. Here's Eddins at the free throw line. Spins into the middle, a nice soft baby hook. Reddy's getting whatever they want right now offensively. Now eight of 12 from the field. Hill across the paint. That's gonna be a blocking foul on Farrar. So Alex Hill going back to the free throw line. First foul on Farrar, third on the Reddies. So it's a nice drive, by the way, for Hill too. Seeing Farrar right there, and obviously Farrar not set, moving along with it. It's an aggressive play and necessary, I would think, for Arkansas Tech at this point. Hill hits the first free throw. Already trip three and four to the free throw line. Has played well over the last five. 14 and a half points per game. Doing six of 13 from three point range. Not a coincidence that that coincides with the Golden Suns four wins in the last five games stretch. Right now the Golden Suns need stops. One of the better defenses in the league is getting shredded right now by the Henderson State offense. Farrar drives left, kicks it out, Huggins. Nice job by Wyrick there, closing out. Edens, another hook in the paint. Cleared off the glass by Thompson. Long lead pass, pass a little behind Wagner, stolen by Farrar. Huggins in transition, that one's short. Allen, the offensive rebound, she's doubled quickly. Hill goes diving to ricochet it out of bounds into the scorer's table. Do you feel like you've seen this before, Luke, as a team in white with crimson trim, just playing at maybe a little bit faster gear than a team in green and gold? Look, does look like a bit of a carbon copy from uh, last night. Some similarities there. A little bit of a higher scoring game thus far as uh, Oklahoma Baptist already outscored in the first half by the Golden Suns this evening. Gittins forced it up through Hill. Great defense there by Hill. And rebound comes to Marsal. Nice feed down low. Good positioning by Thompson on Edens. 
Lead down to eight. Well, and, and Marsal with another great feed. You're talking about that dish. I mean, it was a fantastic pass. Gittens blocked by Hill. It goes off of Gittens last. Nice defense there by the junior Alex Hill. Ladies have missed their last four shots. It was a sizzling start. Nice back cut, and Thompson threw it over the head of Marsal. Well designed play. Absolutely, yeah, it was, it was, it was there. there. But just uh, a little too high on the pass. Maybe Marsal's speed a little too much for Thompson. Didn't anticipate quite as much as and, and she needed to. And Thompson knew it when she threw it. That was, uh, it, that was frustration on her part. Pickens working in the paint. Nice moves with the feet. Missed the shot though. Thompson another rebound, her third. Wyrick leaves it back for Wagner. Marsal tries another three, that's too long. Rebound tipped around, Thompson finds the loose ball and puts it in for two. Thompson now with six. Enjoy the aggression of the uh -huh. Golden Suns defense. Oh, what a move by Marsal. Couldn't wow. finish. Another offensive rebound for the Suns. Dave Wilbur's furious there wasn't a foul call there on Thompson. Gittens left wide open for three, and that's an automatic Tory three for Tory Gittens. Yeah, He's shooting 51% from three this season. It's amazing. Coach Wilbur says that three points is on you. I'd say we have a great battle on the sidelines as well, not just in coaching acumen, but also in referee relationships, if you will, Joey. <laughs> Jill Thomas and Dave Wilbers are uh, not going to let our officiating crew earn their paycheck easily this evening. No. Be a lot of conversations between the coaches and the refs tonight. I was going to say there'd be a lot of dialogue. I think in Coach Wilbur's case, it's a monologue right now because I don't think I don't think they're listening. Substitutions for the Golden Suns. Sisters Jackie and Jordan Rollins into the game. Natives of Mustang, Oklahoma. That pass goes all the way into the backcourt as Wagner tracks it down. Seven on the quarter clock. Wyrick fumbled it off her foot. Stolen. Here's Eddins with two, with one. No good. Was close, but that's the end of the first quarter. A dynamic attack from the Reddies as the Henderson State squad puts up 26 in the first quarter. They lead it by nine, 26-17 after one at Fire Lake Arena. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter after these messages. Hey, what you doing this for? Just out here for recreational purposes? <laughs> Working, man. The mission today is to work hard until you can't go no more. It's always a team mission. Can't get nowhere without the team. It takes everybody. One, two, three. Hey, you better be open. Oh, you better be open. Oh. Man, listen, man, listen. It's only one attitude that you gotta bring. Let's go. That you need to bring. Work, 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 work. I mean, we come down here every day to get better. It was easy. I buy a door, man. We work out on the street. You feel me? We the best in the nation. We outwork, yo. We outwork anybody. We always grind. Always getting better. Every time I come through these lines. No matter what these lines at, work. Maximum effort. Come on, let's go. Going back to Fire Lake Arena, it's been all offense for Henderson State thus far as Gittens misses the three-pointer from the wing, and here come the Golden Suns. That's Jackie Rollins with the basketball right now. Here's Wyrick. She tees up a three from the left wing. Online, in and out. Winans clears. 
for the Reddies. Up ahead, Huggins back up top. Gittins hit fake. Pulls up. That's off the rim, and Winans is called for a foul going for the offensive rebound. Winans, one of the best in the conference, sixth in the league in offensive rebounding. Winans with the foul. That's her first. Team's first to the second quarter. Wagner dumps it into the post to Thompson. Fading on Winans, no good. Loose ball, Huggins saves it to Gittins on the baseline. You know, they, they, the officiating, they are giving a lot of contact. Obviously, that's a foul. But they are giving a lot of contact, specifically underneath both these also teams, trying to make some room, blocking out. And there have been some battles so far tonight. First foul on Dana Thompson, one foul each way, a minute gone by, second quarter. Huggins shooting 77% at the line this season. Some first quarter numbers for you, Joey. Five of seven from three for Henderson State. I like math, so I can do the math, but the math is not good if you go on pace guy for Arkansas Tech. That's not a pace that Dave Wilbers wants to see continue. No, and, and uh, I agree with you. I like math. I can do the math, too. That's math that this team can't keep up with. So he's, he's definitely not going to dig it. Wyrick to the baseline. Nice defense there by Winans, who forced the errant shot from Wyrick. Outside Olivia Allen. Open three. It's good. They, conti they continue that pace. Jill Thomas fired up on the sideline for Henderson State. Entry pass to Thompson. Good positioning on the inside. Missed the shot, though. Rollins, the offensive rebound, back up and in with the left hand. That's Jordan Rollins, Jordan the freshman Rollins. of the Rollins sisters. You know, that's not bad recruiting from Coach Wilbur when you can not only grab a couple of players from the same school, obviously sisters, but that school is a has a quality basketball program, a 6A school in the state of Oklahoma, getting two from a 6A school to come to your program in back-to-back -back years, that's not bad. Fouls on number 25, Olivia Allen. Fouls on Allen, her first, second team foul. A wholesale line change for the Golden Suns as both Rollins, Wyrick, and Dana Thompson check out. Shelly Butler in for the first time. Along with Marsal, Hill, and Prater. Jada Pickens back out there along with Ali McClendon for the first time for Henderson State. Farrar also out there now. Wagner from the foul line, that's no good. Here's Allen dashing the other way. Marsal swiping at it. McClendon on the left block. They swing it around. Huggins run off the line. Oh, nice dump over. They swing it back out. Clinton had a couple shots there from the left block. She didn't take there, Joey. No, there have been opportunities in this possession. Huggins with five on the shot clock. Working against Butler, cut off at the foul line. Allen forces up the three, too strong, and it ricochets over to the Tech sideline where Huggins tracks down the offensive rebound. Here's Pickens sent to the deck. She'll shoot free throws. Okay, this is where you look at what Coach Thomas has going on right now, and there's the foul. I don't know how they keep up that particular pace. She's going to have to get some more play from her bench as well. Great ball movement, but you mentioned it. There were a couple of times where players simply gave up an open look in favor of making one more pass. Pickens 84% at the line this season, seventh in the Great American Conference. She goes one for two there, rebound ricochets around, and Hill tracks it down for the Golden Suns. Here's Prater spinning, missing. Pickens clearing. Pickens across the paint. Back outside Allen. Pump steps around Prater. Oh, and a nice oh. scoop shot there by Olivia, Olivia Allen. Allen. 
Enough on the pump fake to draw a defender in and really impressed with the way she stopped and then started again. Hill saw a gap and took it. She's bumped off her spot on the shot by McClendon. McClendon picking up the foul, her first third team foul. And Alex Hill at the line again for free throws five and six here in the first half. You know, as far as Arkansas Tech's pace is concerned, scoring not too far off of pace with 19 points of 6.35 to go in the opening half, but Henderson's just on another level right now, courtesy of the six made threes. You know, another thing, Luke, is that even with the good ball movement, the way that Marsal has moved the ball around tonight has been very impressive. She's been able to find open looks. But Hill getting to the free throw line, eventually one of those shots is going to fall from the field as well. They might call her number a couple more times and see if she can draw the defenders in and push her direction. She's the one that seems to have her number. That hasn't made one yet, but she's the one that's making it to the basket. 2-3 zone there for the Golden Suns. Edmondson got the deflection, but caught it with her toe on the line. Farrar checks out Gittins back in for the Reddies. Allen up top to Gittins. Left corner, Allen. So they move it around the zone. Ready certainly have the prowess to shoot right over the top of it. Pickens, pass deflected toward Huggins. Excellent speed up top, that pass intercepted by Marsal. Marsal pushing the envelope, fouled from behind by Huggins. A lot of ball there, but also came down hard on Maisa Marsal. Uh, well, Henderson State has clearly shifted gears with their offense. There's, there is more time getting taken off that shot clock with every possession. Marsal misses the free throw. Just a 60% foul shooter this season. He hits the second, 34-21. Henderson State, Eddins returns. returns, Huggins checks out. Sun stay in that 2-3 zone. Eddins with it, working up top. Got around Marsal, they swing it up top to Gittins now. There's Pickens at the high post, but Marsal reaching across, swipes it away. She was eighth in the conference in steals this year with 50, and she missed the first semester with an ankle injury, Joey. And you know, the timing, obviously you hate losing Patience McDaniel, the freshman averaging 21 a game. Nearly 22 a game, that's two fouls on Allie McClendon. She checks out and Winans returns. But fortunately for Arkansas Tech, Marsal came back at the semester break. And you know, while certainly not replacing McDaniel perfectly or completely, it certainly stymied the blow. Well, if you have one out, one in, it works well. From Coach Wilbur's perspective, he'd like to have two. <laughs> yeah, you think about how, how different this team would be yeah. with a 22-point score on the court and the type of defender Marsal is. Well, and the way she moves the ball as well. And Wagner, you get a score like that and you have somebody to distribute it for you, it's a good combination. Allen scoop shot around Wagner. She got it to bounce home on the friendly oh, roll. Yeah. The Rays have opened up a 15-point lead, 36-21. Arkansas Tech, 5 of 12 at the free throw line now, Joey. Here's Prater to the basket. She's fouled. Offensive foul is the call. Official raised his hand first, took a minute, then called the offensive foul on Clara Grace Prater. 
Her first, and that brings us to our media timeout. 4.38 to go first half. 36-21, it's all Henderson State in quarterfinal number three on the women's side. We'll be back after this break. How to spot a bull weevil. Bull weevils are a fascinating species. They're known to travel in packs, are highly intelligent, and can thrive in any environment. Each and every bull weevil is unique, and they have unique opportunities. But they all share one common trait. Every bull weevil has a bright future awaiting wherever they go. And that's how you spot a bull weevil. Learn more at uamont.edu. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. Alex Hill trying to do her part to keep the Golden Suns in this four of six at the free throw line, but Arkansas Tech five of 12 as a team, just one of eight from the field here in the second quarter as the Reddies have opened up a 15 point lead. Make it 18 after that three from Tori Gins. Let's go over to Samantha. Hey Luke, yeah, Coach Jill Thompson just said, that the only thing that's hurting them right now is the fouls that they're giving up. So she has a game plan on how to combat that. And it's by the way they're moving. Instead of coming at the player, she says to slide. And that's to prevent getting a foul. But um, now that we're taking a foul. <laughs> but um, hopefully it improves from here. Good take by Claire Grace Prater there. Thanks for that, Samantha. Prater on the board with her first two points. Prater's been outstanding of late. 43% from three-point range over the last 15 games. Been in double figures in 10 of the last 15, averaging 11 points in that stretch. She completes a three-point play and to knock it back down to a 15-point lead. Golden Stun saying the 2-3 zone. Outside, Farrar tries another three. That one bounces off and wire it clears for Tech. Well, a 2-3 zone is going to give opportunities underneath for rebounds. Wyrick left open on the left wing. She takes advantage with the transition three. But it's Jill Thomas wants time. With 3.44 to go in the quarter. And Joey, the Golden Suns have the defense to get back in this. They're second in the conference in field goal percentage defense with 30 at 35% which is good for 18th nationally, second only to Southern Nazarene. And so they can lock in on these ready shooters. They can get back in this game. Well, that, and that's the thing too, playing that zone defense, unless they get out a little bit farther, they they seem to be playing into Henderson State's hands, at least the way Henderson State has been shooting from the outside. They've taken 12 shots outside the arc, made seven of them 58% from outside the arc. That zone can work, and as you mentioned, they have that capability. They're just gonna have to extend it a little bit if they're gonna stay with that because Henderson State's not been afraid to shoot outside the arc, and again, they've been successful. Kenna Winans back out there along with Jada Pickens. Here is Pickens, run off the line by Prater. Puts up the floater in the paint over the outstretched arms of Julie Wagner. Pickens with her second bucket. She's got four. Let's go along with four boards and five assists. Wyrick pulls up. That's an air ball. Thompson and Winans battle, and Thompson knocks it out of bounds. Over to the Reddies. Henderson State shooting 50% from the field right now. Seven of 12 from three point range. It's a situation where Allen just really had nowhere to go, had to try to toss that toward the basket. Prater cut off on the drive by Farrar. Hill up top, Prater open three, no good. Wyrick, the offensive rebound, puts it up and in. And credit to Wyrick for just fighting through that. 
as underneath Allen had position, just didn't complete the block out, didn't box her out well enough, and Wyrick went up strong and then went back up strong. Gittens open left wing for three. She rips the cords. Well, Coach Wilbers is frustrated at his defense right now, but there really wasn't much they could do. That was just good ball movement. Hill trying to respond. It hits the shot clock and goes out of play. Bradley Huggins and Allen Flynn in return for the Reddies. Gittens 11 points, three of four from three point range. Honestly, unless you just, unless you move out of this zone, the, the passing that's going on right now is really, really strong for Henderson State. They're finding ways to exploit that, the, the gaps in the zone. Thompson got twisted awkwardly as she and McClendon got tangled up going for the loose ball and Thompson turns it over in the backcourt. Pickens, another floater in the paint is good. Jada Pickens. Look, they're, they're going to have to switch out of that. That that zone is is not being effective right now with the ball movement, stepping in, finding the gaps. Henderson State just is really firing on all cylinders on offense. Oh, Hill missed the shot. Thompson tipped the rebound Alex Hill. to Hill, who reestablished in time from out of bounds in order to. Grab the ball and she spins in the reverse layup. Cut the lead back down to 15. Huggins down low to McClendon. Textbook, how you do it at the high post. McClendon's fouled by Thompson. That's her second. Two free throws coming for Allie McClendon. Allen checking back in for Ferrari for Henderson. Edmondson and Martin Saul. Back in number 32, as Thompson and Hill McClendon. take a break. One minute to go in the first half. 47-31 readies as McClendon hits the first free throw. McClendon missed the second. Loose ball. It goes out of bounds off of Gittens. Interesting spin on that free throw. I don't think the ball ever stopped moving before she put it in for the shot. Marsal got it caught on her hip, finds Wagner for the 15-foot baseline jumper. Wagner. Wagner had been scoreless to that point. Nice open look on the baseline. Thirty-five seconds to go. And a 16 difference game to shot clock as Allen turns the corner. Back to Gittens. Pulls up over Prater, knocks it in. <laughs> One shot here for the Golden Suns. They come up on 10 seconds to go in the first half. Wyrick straight away for three, in and out. Huggins tracks down the rebound, gives to Pickens, and that's how the first half ends. It's a whole lot of readies in the first half as Henderson State nearly puts up half a hundred on Arkansas Tech. They lead this one by 16, 49 to 33, and to the defensive drawing board, the Golden Suns will go. And Dave Wilbers thinking, what can he do to slow this Reddy's offense down, Joey? Well, I, I, again, I, I know he'll be able to discuss things at the half. Coach Thomas has everything going right. The, I think there are two questions here. Number one is that can Henderson State keep up that pace? As you mentioned, nearly half a hundred on pace for 98 right now, well above their season average, which was pretty good to begin with in the mid 70s. The other question is, at, at what point in time does Coach Wilbur shift from that zone or at least extend it? They're going to have to see something different on, dif on defense. We'll take an extended break. When we come back, we'll have first half stats, break it all down for you, and we'll get you ready for the second half of action here at Fire Lake Arena. At halftime, it's Henderson State 49, Arkansas Tech 33 on the GAC Sports Network. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. 
East Central University encourages students to become who they are meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home. Christian education pushes you to diligence and excellence in all that you do. We're establishing this foundation that the students can, can then go and do the things that they want to do. Everything we do, everything we touch, everything that we try to teach our students revolves around Christ. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. You find a vision for your life, and I think that's where students really lean into their inspired purpose. Hey future Eddies, are you interested in a career in business? Henderson State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Who do we look to to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. More than book smart, more than business smart. They are wise in their whole being. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what is character, culture, and Christ? Last but certainly not least, in fact, I would put it uh, first, and that is serving Christ. I like the fact that it's last because it does undergird everything that we do. Um, our responsibility, I believe more than anything else, is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Swasser has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swasu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, and great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swasu. Go, go! If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them. Or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the mule riders are. When you're a mule rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail. You're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Hey, Future Readies, are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. 
Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but there's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, every moment brings you one step closer to what comes next. You've got this. Right here, right where you are. Focus on the now, because our focus is on your success. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in a career in technology? Kennesaw State University offers degrees in aviation, computer science, and engineering. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, till they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Why be one champ? When I want to be two. Be like you, Sra. Let nothing destroy your dreams. Screw fate. Or maybe you beat doubt one step at a time, like Johnny. What about Zoe? Never satisfied. Not with trophies or stunts. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? Who do we look to? to shape our world. It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who contribute with compassion, courage, confidence. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. Tomorrow's difference makers and world changers will understand they're part of something bigger an unstoppable force for good. More than book smart, more than business smart. They are wise in their whole being. These are the people who will shape our future and you'll find them at OBU today. I am a future shaper. I'm a future shaper. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. 49-33, the Reddies of Henderson State feeling really good about themselves right now at halftime at Fire Lake Arena. Welcome back, Luke McConnell, Joey McWilliams with you this evening. Quarterfinal number three, Joey, and it's been all Henderson State, courtesy of 53% shooting and eight of 13 from the three-point line. It's just an impressive number, and I know it's just for the first 20 minutes, so there's 20 more minutes to get done. A 16-point lead is not something that is insurmountable for Arkansas Tech, but the way Henderson State is playing and the way they've aggressively gotten around that defense uh, Arkansas Tech is in a tough situation. Obviously, Coach Wilbers had some halftime adjustments. We'll see what comes out. Right now, we're going to talk with Inkblot Sports, Philip Myers. Philip, 
runs inkblotsports.com, kind of the D2 bracketologist, if you will. And Philip, some developments up in Kansas City as Central Missouri lost today in the quarterfinals up in the MIAA tournament. The Jenny's on maybe on the outside looking in at this point, and that loss certainly did not help their at-large chances. Yeah, I, I think Central Missouri's chances are, are fin I think they're finished now. They they really needed to do, to win some games this week and they didn't win any. So that that's so getting from ninth is, so so they they were ranked ninth this week and several teams ahead of them have won and so I, I, there's really no path for them to get in at this point. Well, here in Shawnee, Henderson State making a strong case to be a bid stealer, perhaps. And should Henderson State or Northwestern or Tech or anybody else not named Southern Nazarene or Harding get into the or NCAA tournament out of the GAC, who do you think would be the team that gets bumped out of the Central Region? Well, it's too early to say because um, the teams that are that were uh, sixth and seventh in the rankings last week, um, Northwest Missouri State and Pittsburgh State, um, number eight is already in because they're an auto bid. But those six and seven teams, they are both they have both advanced to the MIAA semifinals, and so um, it, so at present, I would say that Northwest Missouri State has the advantage over Pittsburgh State. Part of that is because they won their only head-to-head -head matchup, and they also, they're also better in some other areas. Hey, Philip, and you know, you look um, at uh, how Missouri Southern has played down the stretch. You know, they lose in the quarterfinals to Pitt State. Are they in any danger at this point? They they could be, depending on what happens with with Northwest Missouri and Pittsburgh State. I think it, if it, if both of those were to win their semifinals and meet in the title game, and in that scenario that you mentioned where Northwestern or Henderson State were to win the uh, GAC, then you could potentially see Missouri Southern being in that position. Now, one thing that could help them, though, is that they do have that win over Harding, which has kept them ahead of Harding up to this point. But it depends on also on what, what Harding does if it were if Harding were to beat Northwestern State and then lose to Henderson State in the final, I don't know. I don't know exactly where that would put them relative to Missouri Southern. The cells should be safe, but it, but where they are could impact where Missouri Southern is placed. Well, Philip, thank you so much for your time and insight. As always, it's been great having you here this week, and we look forward to catching up with you a little bit later this evening as we talk a little bit more on Northwestern's chances to sneak into the NCAA tournament. That's Philip Myers of inkblotsports.com. You can follow him on social media at inkblotsports. See the halftime stats. Arkansas Tech just 38% from the field. Anderson State a sizzling 53%. Free throw percentage, not going to be something either coach is very pleased with there. <laughs> Both under 60%. Eight turnovers for Tech in that first half, leading to 13 Henderson State points in the first half. Just a single point off the five ready turnovers for Arkansas Tech. Joey, it's, it's all going to start on the defensive end for the Golden Suns if they want to come back and keep playing this weekend. Absolutely, and to your point, when your two teams combined free throw percentage is less than 105, that's not a good mark right there, but it, it will. It will depend on, on the defense. Arkansas Tech does need to have a couple of shots fall. They absolutely do, but they're going to have to play some different defense. Our sideline reporter, Samantha Roop, spoke with coaches coming out of the locker room. Samantha, what did you learn? Yeah, I got to speak with Jill Thomas, and I asked her, what do you think your team should improve on, and what do you think you can keep up? And she thinks that giving up fouls is what I talked about the last time we spoke. Um, she said the way they're moving to create the fouls is what they need to correct on. And she said that they did go over that, so hopefully we can see less fouls. Uh, she did say that the combinations in the first half were working, and so she just wants to keep that up for her team. Well, good defensive play there for the Reddies, forcing Alex Hill into the end for turnover by stepping on the baseline. Good positioning there for the Reddies defense. Thank you, Samantha. 
That's Samantha with us all weekend long. Basil in with the left hand hook off the glass. And the Reddies pick up right where they left off and extend this lead out to 18. Prater run off the line. Here's Wagner inside to Thompson, right through her hands. She gets it back on the deflection. Missed the shot, though. Outside Farrar, transition three, in and out. Man, that would have sent the Henderson fans into hysterics over on the far side. Thompson backing down, spins to the baseline, forced it up through some contact and scores. Well, as, as Samantha mentioned, Coach Thomas looking for the defense to slide. They're not going to have to slide that much if players like Thompson are just going to back right in. That's for better ball movement. But again, Tech still has to have shots fall. That was important to get that one. Farrar off balance, missed that one. Hill calmly into the front court now. Pushes the pace, gives it out to Prater. Two minutes gone by, third quarter. A bucket either way. Here's Marsal across the paint, dumps it toward Thompson, knocked out of bounds by the Reddies. Tech basketball on the baseline, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Enjoy, I think, the biggest key for Tech not trying to score a 16-point basket. You can't do that. You no. have to go one possession at a time on each end of the floor. Well, it looks like a big emphasis during the half is to get the ball to Thompson down low, as uh, that has been where all the passes have gone. And to Thompson's credit, she's turning and trying to make something happen. That's number three on Bobby Basil. Two minutes gone by in the third period. Dana Thompson at the line for two free throws. 65% foul shooter this season. In and out on the first one. Thompson averaging nearly 14 rebounds per game over her last five games. And a little over 12 points per game in that stretch as well. She had 20 boards at Washita back on February 17th. She splits the pair of free throws. The lead is 15, 51, 36. Yeah, that's an impressive number. Player of Grace Prater, just momentum. I mean, that, that's all there was, trying to catch up with somebody, and it was just too much momentum. Yeah, had the angle on Farrar. Once Farrar stumbled a little bit after the deflection. Too much. Well, that's a foul on Alex Hill guarding Ashley Farrar. Farrar nine points today. That's the second foul on Hill. Eddins comes in for the Reddies as Huggins takes a break. Farrar up and in with the first one. Tied for first with Faith Simpson to Northwestern. 161 free throw attempts this season for Farrar. And she shoots them at an 81% clip. And should they both get to the free throw line. They get there through different methods, but they both get there, and that's effective for their teams. Nice pass inside to Thompson. Great positioning on Wynan. A good feed inside for Marsal. Her third assist of the evening. Speaking of Faith Simpson, you can see her over there on the exercise bike getting loosened up before quarterfinal number four on the women's side. That's coming up next as Wynan's with a nice fadeaway jumper. Wynan's transfer from Oral Roberts out of Parkersburg, West Virginia. Straightaway three for Marsal's no good, and Winans another rebound, her second. Well, well, Roberts University, head women's basketball coach there, former GAC coach in Kelsey Music. 
Having a great year, using some former GAC players. I know it's Jaylee Oglesby, it's, who she was the other one I was thinking of. Could have been out here in green and gold this evening, but opting to use her finer year of eligibility at the D1 level. Doing great things for Kelsey Music. And a foul at the buzzer. I mean, that, it's, it's the epitome of a great offensive set. You run 30 seconds off the clock. You still have an opportunity to put two points up and in. Dave Wilbur is having an animated discussion with Scott Klompus over there on the sideline. See Marsal and Wilbur both claiming verticality. To no avail. Pickens free throw makes it 56-38. Here's Marsal to the basket and foul on Winans as she drove Marsal toward the baseline. Well, that's how you counter that is you just take it the other direction really quickly and Marsal did, drawing the contact on the other end of the court. That's a long shooting two, number three. Maisa Marsal. Jill Thomas saying that that's a makeup call for a bad call on the other end. <laughs> telling on herself there, Joey. Exactly, yeah. Telling on herself there, saying that it was a bad call on Marsal. Marsal missed both free throws, though. Yeah, free throws. Just not a good look. Now, 7 of 17 for Tech. Not how you get back in the ball game, and Eddins got caught in the middle of the paint and traveled. Sixth turnover for the Reddies. Golden Suns at nine. Jill Thomas still in the ear of Scott Klompus. With respect, I, I don't think she has that much to be frustrated about at the moment. No, she's saying it's not just because her team's up by 18. I mean, they're they're playing decent basketball. To the point that Samantha's made a couple times, as she said, they probably could have stand to slide their feet a little bit more. But for the most part, Henderson State has played a quality ball game tonight. They have to have executed well what they wanted to do. Prater trying to get it over to Thompson, but threw it behind her and out of bounds. Timeout called by Dave Wilbers. And we have a media timeout on the floor. 30-second timeout that stretches to immediate timeout. We'll take it as well. 5.46 to go third quarter. Henderson State up by 18. We'll be back with more on the GAC Sports Network. Hey, what you doing this for? Just out here for recreational purposes? <laughs> Working, man. The mission today is to work hard until you can't go no more. It's always a team mission. Can't get nowhere without the team. It takes everybody. One, two, three. Hey, you better be open. You better be open. Man, listen, man, listen. It's only one attitude that you gotta bring. Let's go. That you need to bring. Work, 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 work. I mean, we come out here every day to get better. It feels easy. I buy a door, man. We work out on the street. You can be the best in the nation. We outwork, yo. We outwork anybody. Every time I come through these lines, no matter what these lines at, work. Maximum effort. Come on, Let's go. Golden Suns fans waiting on something to cheer about when their team down 18, 546 to go, third quarter. The quarterfinals of the GAC championships. It's been a lot of Henderson State, the ready shooting 53% from the field. Including two of four here in the third quarter, but that's a turnover as Hill throws it ahead oh. to Marsal, who goes in for the layup. Marisa Marsal. There, were, there was some upper body strength from Hill to get that pass where she wanted it to go. Also helped to be left-handed. <laughs> yes. That was the only free hand she had there. Edens able to break pressure. Now she's in the middle of the paint, forces up. She got fouled, no call. Looked like Hill hit her right on the arm.
Okay, this is the most life we've seen in this Tech defense tonight. Came out of that timeout on fire, and it's not just the full court press. They were moving. They were closing in. Seven on the shot clock for Marsal. Retreats behind the three-point line, left it short. Good box out on Wagner by Farrar. Finds Eddins leaking out down the court and blew the layup. And then Pickens compounds the issue with a foul in the backcourt. Foul on Pickens is her first. And that takes us to our official media timeout. We'll keep it here through the break. And Joey, the thing that is impressive for the Reddies in this one is they're playing sound defense. Defense has not been the Reddies' forte this year. They give up 71 points a game, 32% from three, 40% from the three-point line. They get out-rebounded on average as well, but they've done enough defensively to keep Tech off balance here this evening. Yeah, they have, and, and that's been fun to watch. They've been able to translate that into something going the other direction. Oftentimes you hear about teams that, that play offense well, they, that they come off of a good defensive stand and they'll get something in transition. They just moved the ball well on the offensive end when they got, when they got down there. Not as many transition points, but enough to get it going. I, and, but again, I go back, this is the most life we've seen in this Tech defense in the last couple of minutes. And again, it's not just the fact that they've tried to pick up more of a full court look and, and pick up the defenders a little bit earlier in the possession. They're just moving more quickly and seem to be more aggressive. Can they keep up that pace? Having a timeout like this only works their benefit because it gives them a chance to get a breather. 15 points off 10 Tech turnovers for Henderson State. That's a big difference in this one. Shots are about the same. 39 field goal attempts for Tech, 38 for Henderson State. Eight more have gone through yeah. the bucket from three-point range for Henderson State. Three three-pointers for Tech. But again, one possession at a time. Marsal left that one short for our with the rebound, and here comes the Reddies. Farrar straight at Prater, off glass, and good, and the foul. The basket is good by Ashley Farrar. The foul is number 24, Claire Grace Prater is there. Get down there, you don't want to give up the easy basket. If you have a foul to give, you want to give it, but at that point in time, you have to make sure that Farrar doesn't make the basket and it becomes an end one opportunity. Third foul on Prater. And the three-point play puts the Reddies lead at 19 with four and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Haley Weirich in for the Golden Suns. Marsal leaves it back for Hill. Fires a high arcing three that finds the bottom of the net. Big answer there for the Golden Suns. Alex Hill shooting the ball well from deep. Six of 13 from deep over the last five. Huggins too strong on that one. Winans the offensive rebound for Henderson. Allen guarded by Thompson sizing her up. Gets it outside. Huggins now between the legs. Allen will try a three. Short, Farrar had it. It goes out of bounds. Who's it out off last? It's off of Weirich, they rule. And by the way, they have made that shift to the man defense now. Huggins comes out. Torrey Gittens back in. Allen triggering in left baseline for the Reddies. Allen knifing across the lane, threw it wide of Ferrar though, and that's a turnover over to the Golden Suns. Well, you mentioned a while ago, and of course the deficit is still the same, although more times come off the clock. It's something Tech can't get a, and shouldn't try to take a 16 point shot. Surprise didn't draw the foul on that one, but you get it back once at a time. Hill fighting for it, 
and is going to wind up getting possession. That yeah, is a fortuitous bounce. Play. Great hustle from Hill and Marsal both. Entry pass in the middle to Thompson. Thompson forced it up. Missed it. Again, the Reddy's doing a nice job of playing defense without fouling. Pickens thought about the three, fires it, and nails it. And there was no one within nine feet of her. She had an open look. That was just day of practice. Even Pickens, who shoots just 20% from three coming into tonight, will be able to make that as Marsal and one opportunity on the drive. Number one, yeah, you're right. But it's one of those times, too, that when you're that open, you almost have to take the shot. And she did. Gittins draws her first personal foul. Winans and Allen check out as Huggins and McClendon return for Henderson State. Sarah Edmondson in for the Golden Suns. Free throw off the mark again. It's nearly fumbled out of bounds, but Farrar has it. Up ahead for Pickens, and a snare it along the sideline. That's a catch in the NFL, Joey. Yes. Two feet yes, in. Yes, it is. <laughs> Pickens to the basket, left it short. Wyrick the rebound, four on three. Here's Marsal racing to the basket, reverse layup. Oh, what a shot from Marsal. Oh, the English on that layup. That should make the highlight reel. Way down to 15, 62, 47. Two minutes to go, third quarter, but Technique stops. Weirich got one there and deflected it out of bounds. Stays with Henderson State as Marsal went to the floor for it. Shot clock stays at 15. Henderson shooting 36% from the field in the second half. Oh, nice move by Huggins. A little dream shake with the Good shoulders man, there. Man. Get herself a wide open look in the middle of the paint. Huggins now at 12 this evening. Marsal driving kick to Wyrick. Wyrick pulls up from the right elbow. Too strong, loose ball. McClendon has it. Thompson goes down. McClendon wide open underneath. Pickens and Huggins didn't see her in time. Here is Pickens. Drive, spins on Edmondson. Floater, good. Joey just feels like Henderson's night at this point. Exactly. I was going to say that momentum, it's catchy. Everyone's getting, starting to feel it now. Marsal from straight away off the iron. One minute remaining in the third quarter, one minute. One minute left in the quarter. The Reddies lead by 19. Here's Pickens up top. Gittens tries the wing three. It rims out. Tech just needs to get to the end of the quarter at this point in time. They need a breather. Marsal pivoting. Needs help. Gets it out to Hill. Hill drives left. Forced it up. She was fouled. Two free throws coming for Alex Hill. The, Red, the Golden Suns have had their chances in this quarter. Henderson State before those back-to-back -back buckets. Shooting just 36% in the quarter but could not take advantage of the situation. Doesn't help that they're one for five from the free throw line in the quarter so far and seven of 18 for the game. It's seven of 19. Wow. And again, at this point, two teams combined free throw percentage with that make just went above 105. Pressure extended still. 17 on the clock. Shot clock is off. Here's Farrar. Left wide open because of the pressure. Left the three short. Loose ball. It goes out of bounds. They say off of Shelly Butler last. 8.9 on the clock. Before we head to the final stanza. 
Huggins inbounding right baseline, found Pickens underneath. Spun back into the middle of the paint, into a crowd of defenders. Ball is loose, McClendon finds it, puts it up. He bounces in, and the foul. The rim's just gotten big for everyone. Helter Skelter play and McClendon on the spot puts it in. Draws the foul on Shelly Butler and shooting one number 32, Ali McClendon. That puts the lead at 20, the largest lead of the evening as McClendon puts it in to make it 21. Rollins fires it up to Wagner at midcourt. Shots go awry, and that's the end of the third quarter. Henderson State, 10 minutes away from a date with the defending champs. They lead this one 69 to 48 at the end of three. We'll be back with the final quarter from Shawnee after these messages on the GAC Sports Network. How to spot a bull weevil. Bull weevils are a fascinating species. They're known to travel in packs, are highly intelligent, and can thrive in any environment. Each and every bull weevil is unique, and they have unique opportunities. But they all share one common trait. Every bull weevil has a bright future awaiting wherever they go. And that's how you spot a bull weevil. Learn more at uamont.edu. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. Welcome back to Fire Lake Arena. Ten minutes to go in quarterfinal number three, Henderson State in firm control against Arkansas Tech, leading this one 69-48. Luke McConnell and Joey McWilliams here for what has been just a fantastic performance by the Henderson State Reddies. 50% shooting from the field, nine three-pointers. As Hill gets around Gittens, just bounces off, no good. Rebound comes back out to her. She puts it up through contact. She's fouled. We'll go to the line for two free throws. Ladies, foul number two, Jada Pickens. That's her second. Team's first of the fourth quarter at the line. Joey, you know things are tough for Tech Correction. when Dave Wilbers is pretty quiet on the sidelines. You're exactly right. We've seen him much more animated over the years. But... There have been much more competitive contests. This one has favored Henderson State really since the tip. And it's a program that looks like it wants to get rid of the memory of six consecutive postseason losses to the same opponent. Yeah, we talked about the size of Arkansas Tech being a bother you know, really for anybody. So that has not been the case. Henderson State has nullified that advantage in a lot of different ways. Here's Pickens with 13 on the shot clock. Runner in the paint, short. A foul called on Pickens. Thought she got away with it there for a second, but she'll on the spot with the correct call. You talk about neutralizing that site and it's uh, that size, and it and it has, I mean that's accurate. It's just been neutralized with good ball movement tonight, good passing. I would say aggressive play on the offensive end, although the defense has looked pretty well too. But just the way that they've moved the ball so well against the defense that the size has been a non-factor. Wagner, baseline hooks, no good. Butler couldn't get around McClendon. Excellent box out by McClendon there. Keep Butler from getting that offensive rebound. She checks out Bobby Basil back in. You know, you can't, they say you can't teach size. I think you can teach physics. 
two objects can't occupy the same place at one time. When you teach someone how to box out well, you can neutralize some of that size. Huggins has it ripped away from her by Weirich and an easy deuce for Rollins underneath. And Rollins a little too aggressive there on Allen. Jackie Rollins both with the basket and the foul. That's her first. First on Rollins, first on the Golden Suns in the quarter. 17-point lead for the Reddies, and Marsal steps in front of Farrar. Nearly lost it, fires it up ahead. Here's Wagner, back to Weirich. Fast start to the quarter for the Golden Suns. Weirich with a three that would have been helpful. It caroms out of bounds over to the Reddies. Farrar inbounding right in front of the Tech bench. Not an ideal location there. Up ahead, Eddins breaks pressure and the Golden Suns sink back in a 2-3. Eddins, nice crossover, kicks it out. Huggins, wide open three, it's online. It's perfect. Brindley. Brindley Huggins, her third triple of the night. She's got a team high 15, leading four players in double figures for Henderson State. It has been a balanced assault. That pass wide of the mark and ricochets over out of bounds in front of us. And another turnover for Arkansas Tech, their 11th of the game. Yeah, Huggins with 15, Farrar with 14, Gittins with 13, Pickens with 12. Not a bad box score right now, still seven and a half to go. Huggins with another one from the left wing. And any momentum had, Tech had, from those turnovers just a moment ago. It's all gone now. 23 point lead for Henderson State. It's Marsal draws the foul on Allen driving to the basket. Second foul on Allen and subs here for Tech. Weirich and Rollins check out. Oh, you want to give it one more run with, with Hill coming back in. McClendon, excuse me. Hill coming back in, I apologize. Thompson coming back in, Prater coming back in. One last go at it. The original starting five out there right now for Tech. Here's Hill. Farrar falls down, Hill missed the shot. Thompson over the back of Basil for the offensive rebound. Hill fouled by Huggins. Huggins goes down hard. Also Alex Hill Huggins, that's to the line Huggins. for two more free throws. She's seven of ten tonight. Alan Huggins is her second. Two, Alex Hill. Huggins checks out. Pickens back in for Henderson State. Hill misses the second. Ferrar up high for the rebound. Reddy's not slowing down with seven minutes to play and leading by 22, 75-53. Allen at the elbow, across the paint, ripped away by Hill. Marsal with it, two on one break. Marsal tried to bounce it to Hill. Ferrar got a hand on it. Hill got it back. No call on the contact. Prater, the offensive rebound. Marsal to Wagner, Wagner, 15-footer, too strong. Allen has it and then fumbled it out of bounds as Marsal got the deflection off her leg. JJ Adams returns, replacing number 25, Olivia Allen. Gotta say, if I was an opponent, I would not enjoy playing against Masia Marsal. <laughs> she's, a, she's a pest out there on defense, just getting deflections, touches, here and there, wouldn't that be frustrating? Well, Marsal's gonna have to check so out a little bit of blood. If you're Henderson State, you just got your wish. Indeed. Defense! 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 
Prater trying to get free, has not been able to this evening. Left that short Thompson, another offensive rebound. It's her fifth of the evening, gives her a double-double tonight. Now, played her a little bit off her mark tonight, one for five from the field. Hill spinning, just missed it off the glass. Pickens all the way to the basket, floater over Wagner's no good. Offensive rebound, Basil back up, she's fouled. She'll shoot two. That was the number 30, Julie Wagner. That's her second team second. Back to the line for the Reddies will be number 33. Four, two. Two shots here for Basil. Marsal back in for Hill. Basil misses the first. It's, it's uh it's been a long night for Hill. Been a long night for everybody. Oh, and and green, green and gold. gold. Exactly. Second one no good as well for Basil. The score remains 75-53. Under six minutes to play. Marcel straight away for three, knocks it down. Trying to get a fourth point out of that. Fell to the court, but couldn't get the call. Marcel with 16 now. Hill with 13, but Hill's done it on two of 10 shooting from the field. She made her points on the free throw line this tonight. It's a jab step. Her three pointer's no good. Wagner has the miss. Here comes Tech. Maybe one final push here, Joey, for the Golden Suns. Wyrick pulls up from 15, in and out. Thompson, the offensive rebound, but she that was under the did Thompson, it illegally. Third. Team's third. It's her third personal foul. Team's third. Still 5.09 to play. 19 point lead for the Reddies. Now. 47.8% from behind the arc. Wow, what a Marsal steal. Marsal picks the pocket of Pickens, then airballs the shot. Prater saves it, and here come the Reddies, three on two. Huggins circles the wagons back out up top. 20 on the shot clock. We're under five to go. Reddies trying to polish off their best performances of the season. Edens. Off glass and good. It's a, it's a great performance, but there there is a lot more than just the season here. This this is going to go, and I'm sure there are a lot of Reddy's fans and players from years back that would like to see the W tonight. Wagner outside to Prater. Prater crosses over on Huggins, fades in the paint, off the mark again from Clara Grace Prater, one for six from the field. One of many tough nights as Thompson pokes it away. Farrar tracks down the loose ball. Backing down on Wyrick into the paint. Spins, kicks it out. Huggins, another three on the way. Hits curved. Brindley Huggins. Brindley Huggins with her fourth, th fifth three of the night. 12 three-pointers tonight. By the way, that's that's closing in on a record for the Great American Conference Tournament. 3.34 to go, 80 to 56, Henderson State putting on a show here this evening. We'll be back to wrap it up the, the final three and a half minutes on the GAC Sports Network. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. East Central University encourages students to become who they are meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home.
Hey, there's Jerry the Bulldog. Jerry, the campus ambassador, not the mascot, Joey, I, the I campus know. ambassador. I would never make that mistake. For Arkansas Tech. You know, you know that's what he Jerry says. four, right? Actually, I it's either Jerry three or Jerry two. I think there Is was really? a, I think there was a Jerry that had a like a two week stint, but I don't know if he factors into the numerology. Ooh, that's a, don't quote that's me a on that. That's a controversial statement. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, you're just the messenger. But that's uh, a, yeah. That's a controversial ruling by Arkansas Tech uh, on who they dub is worthy of a numeral or not. I'm, Again, uh, I, I make my home in Durant, not Russellville, so I, I don't want to be the authority figure on that. Well, and it's Marsal gets fouled going to the basket again. I do know this. He, he does say fight on. He does. He does. Uh, it sounds like, <laughs> but he does say it. See, I can hear it in Sam Strasner's voice, though. Of course, Sam Strasner and his family get to house Jerry the Bulldog. I guess yeah, we do need an official ruling from from Sam at some point. I think I think I've heard him say the third. Marsal goes two for two at the line. Now four for four at the line over two straight trips. She's got 20. Seven steals tonight as well for Maisa Marsal. You know, with a lead like this, I don't know that they're going to shoot too many more threes. We'll see how it works out. As it stands, though, Henderson State with 12 three-pointers tonight. And oh, oh, that's that's the glass. That, that one's well inside the This tournament record is 14 three-pointers in a game. Happened three years ago. I was about to pull out the record book and test you if you 20, knew when and who. 2021, I do know. Arkansas Tech, as a matter of fact, three years ago, March the 3rd, and they were taking on East Central. Look at you go. Well, 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 but how many did they attempt? I was going to say, I, I, I have a little bird in my ear every now and again. Oh, that's cheating. I know. That's cheating. See, now, here's the deal, though, Luke. Let me tell you that. Uh, I will tell you when there is a little bird in my ear. It's not always there. There are times it's just straight up Joey. Here's Farrar. She'll try one. Maybe she heard you and was like, let's get that record. <laughs> let's get that record. Let's go. Substitutions both ways. We got a plethora. Sam Basson in for the Reddies, along with number 22, Kate Miller. For Arkansas Tech, sisters Jackie and Jordan Rollins, along with Allie Pollock and Alana Leho. Sophomore out of a Karuna, Spain. Here's Jackie Rollins, tries a three from the right wing. That's short. Rebound comes to Bassan. As we look ahead, that's actually what I was thinking was, Joey, you know, wow, does the Reddies had they got beat pretty good on their home court in Arkadelphia by the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene back in January, but gave SNU, besides the loss to Harding, their SNU's toughest test in the regular season came against Henderson State in that game in Bethany back on January 3rd. And timeout just long enough to get some substitutions in. Erica Patton and Olivia Allen come in for the Reddies. Huggins gets the applause of the crowd and, and what a great effort she's had tonight. Absolutely, 21 points, five made threes, five rebounds. Here's Bassan, outside Miller. Back to Bassan with seven on the clock. One minute to play. Patton down low, reaching foul. Coming on Bree Bowden, who just checked in for Arkansas Tech. You know, you look ahead, and, and obviously, you need, of course, you've shared what's happened over the course of the season. Now, here we are in Shawnee. I, my, my question is, can Southern Nazarene 
come back with the same intensity. The, the good thing for the Crimson Storm is having a day off. You know, they're getting one of those top two seeds, you get the day off before you go into championship Saturday. Can they come back and play with that intensity and, and execute, not only the intensity, but the execution on that level, well, the, as well as Henderson State play tonight? It would be tough for the Reddies to keep up with that level of, of intensity and execution. So that, that's my question. Bowden down low gets the points and always enjoy when the end of the bench gets in and scores. And teammates all appreciate regardless of the margin. 40 seconds to go. Well, I think the same could be same for Henderson State though, Joey. They came out on fire in this one looking to make a point. Can they put up another show like this? Eden saves it to Miller, to Allen. Allen outside to Passan. And Allen wanting to share the wealth there. 12 on the shot clock for the freshman. Passan outside Eddins. Long two on the way. Off the mark. Long rebound comes to Patton. Patton fires it. Intercepted by Rollins. Five seconds for Rollins. And that's going to do it. Henderson State with a dominant performance. They win this one 82 to 62 over Arkansas Tech this evening at Fire Lake Arena. They're moving on to the semifinals. First time since 2022 when they won this 4 5 matchup before falling to Southwestern Oklahoma State in the semifinals. They'll see the number one seed Southern Nazarene tomorrow at 5.45. Right now, we'll take a quick break, come back and wrap things up from Fire Lake Arena. Henderson State, a winner tonight, 82 to 62. Back in just a moment. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail. You're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Henderson State, a 20 point win over Arkansas Tech tonight. Joey, the Reddies jumped on Tech early. 26 first quarter points, one of three 20 point quarters. That's going to get you a lot of wins in college basketball. Absolutely, it will. And they, they spread the wealth well. They had four players in double figures tonight. It just was impressive. Henderson State. Uh, it feels the, the relief of the postseason frustration now that it's had with Arkansas Tech. That is now a thing of the past. And you just have to, to not only talk about how well they shot the ball, but how well they just effectively neutralized the Arkansas Tech defense. Right now, Samantha Roop is with Tori Gittens of Henderson State. Samantha, let's hear from Tori. Hi, I'm with Tori. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you, thank you so much. What did your team have to do this time to get where you are now to secure that win today? You know, all week our emphasis has really just been rebounding, putting a body on somebody. We kept losing the rebounding war every time that we played them, so we just really made it an emphasis in practice, and yeah, we got it done. Tomorrow, Southern Nazarene, what, what can you improve on going into tomorrow's game? I mean, second time we played them, it was a pretty close game at their place. So um, I'm pretty sure we're going to be using some of the same stuff that we did in that game plan, but executing it a little bit better, just honing down on key details in our offense and just getting it done. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Joey, back to you. 
Well, Luke, it, it was it was a, an effective night all the way around. Gittens, the newcomer of the year in the conference, really had a good showing here on this conference stage. Absolutely, 13 points for her. Henderson State ends the day 47% from the field, held Arkansas Tech to 33% shooting here this evening. As you see the final stats, 12 three-pointers for Henderson State. That's gonna get it done most nights in college basketball, and especially holding Arkansas Tech to just five of them. But you see that rebound margin there at the end. Henderson State out rebounding Tech by 11 this evening, including even on the offensive glass. Huge, huge deal for Henderson State for them to be able to win comfortably here this evening. Yeah, that, absolutely, and, and it, it came along as the game went on. They just extended their rebound advantage. It just, like we mentioned through this, as the game went on, the rim got bigger, and it happened for everyone. So that's going to do it from quarterfinal three, Henderson State advancing to take on number one seed Southern Nazarene tomorrow evening at 545. Coming up on the GAC Sports Network, it's the final game of, court of the quarterfinals. Northwestern Oklahoma State, the number three seed on the women's side, taking on number six seed Southwestern Oklahoma State. It's a rivalry matchup, and the Rangers still with faint hopes of trying to get into the NCAA tournament. We'll see if they can do that with a win over the Bulldogs. That's coming up next on the GAC Sports Network.